finding those and like creating alerts based off of them like if if that's where we're at currently then i just see this like technology especially stellar cyber just continue growing because i'm not completely sure if there's any other company other than stellar cyber like currently working on something like this there might be later on but but i still feel like stellar cyber already has like its grasp in that like aspect of cybersecurity and ai combined so i think that's really cool and it's really useful welcome to this week and the very first episode of the cyber gemma podcast where we dive into the stories and perspectives of people shaping the world of technology Today, we have a special guest, Emily Sakat, who is a determined and self-driven student currently pursuing her bachelor's degree in computer science. She has a passion for cybersecurity and is involved in multiple academic and professional endeavors, molding her into a well-rounded and skilled individual. Join us today as we have a conversation about Emily's passion, her journey, and her vision for the future. Well, first, welcome and thank you for joining the podcast today. How are you doing? I'm good, Kobe. How are you? Thank you so much for the introduction. Um, thank you for coming today. Um, we definitely, I've been following your journey through LinkedIn, everything that you've been moving, posting, and just want to say you've been inspiring for a lot of people and definitely want to interview you today just for that reason and understand how are you getting where you are right now and what's your vision, what's your future looking like and how you want to use your platform to even share value with others, with your knowledge, what you're learning. And so, yeah, um, thank you again for coming today. And we can go into the first questions. And the first question is, what inspired you to pursue a career in computer science and specifically in the field of cybersecurity? So at first, when I started my computer science degree, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I just knew that I love technology because in high school, I was part of this information technology pathway and it was really fun for me. I really liked learning different programming languages and different technologies. And yeah, so that helped me want to pursue computer science. So I chose computer science because I knew it was like super broad. So I wouldn't really need to choose something right away. And I tried going to the artificial intelligence club, but nothing really like clicked for me. I thought it was like super cool, but I didn't really like see a future for myself or like see myself in that career. And then I also tried going to the cyber defense team meetings and I thought it was like the most amazing thing ever. I thought that they were like doing something so amazing and it felt like something that I could really do, but at the same time, I had some like imposter syndrome and I was like, how am I going to like remember how to do everything and remember all of these different like commands? But honestly, now I'm here because I just kept trying to learn every single day and now I know what I want to do. And I'm super passionate about cybersecurity and informing other people about different security threats and different technologies in cybersecurity. And that's like a really interesting path because, you know, yeah, cybersecurity is a really broad industry, broad field that anybody can get into. And again, the route that you take in, like, you know, you don't have to pick a certain avenue right now. As of now, you can learn everything. You can learn a lot, like the mass majority of different topics and you will see which one fits you the best. So, and that's a really, you know, that's a good approach to take because, not everybody, especially if you're coming from a non cybersecurity or even a computer science background, you don't know, you don't understand what each, which each career path is. You don't know the different fields that you can be into. So take an approach of like seeing everything as a whole and then moving into something that you like. That's a really good approach to take. And yeah, I can see joining even with the cyber defense team at San Diego State, they... At first, when you when you learn it, it seems like a lot. But again, when you do a little bit more hands-on practice, a little bit more learning, self-learning by yourself, you become a little bit better at it and you feel a little bit more confident in your abilities into it. And it's a really interesting path. And again, you're really inspiring people, even somebody that's not even coming from a computer science background, somebody that may be changing career path. 
they can see you and you're setting a bar, you're setting an example for people to see how they can move in this field. And again, I want to say that you're inspiring a lot of people. And so thank you so much. <laughs> I always do my best to do that because so many people in the community really inspired me. And especially another thing I want to say about LinkedIn is when you follow a lot of people that have that profession, like, for example, I follow a lot of people that are cybersecurity professionals. So I know what a cybersecurity professional does exactly. So after I figured out what they do, I then started trying to learn those skills. So it became a lot easier to learn those skills because I know what they do and I can like hone in on those. And so you can say like, I mean, you can emulate from my, what other people do in a way where you can watch what they do, watch the moves that they make, and you can learn from that. Because mm -hmm. the beauty of social media, LinkedIn, is you can share, you can share knowledge on a platform where everybody can see the moves that you make, the, the career that you take, um, things that you're learning. You can share this and somebody else can pick up and say, oh, I didn't know this. They had this. And now you can learn something new. For example, um, with you, you're doing Code Red, for example. I didn't know about Code Red. And when you post your certifications, it kind of showed people, oh, whoa, like, I didn't know they had this. And so you're you're sharing knowledge where anybody can pick up on, they can learn from easily. And that route that you're taking is, is really good. It's really good because when you follow the professionals, when you follow the leaders in this field, you can learn from them and you can gain the skills from them. And you're you're the example of that. Learn, be able to learn from the people that you follow, the people that you lead. So yeah, exactly. That's that's so true. Like sometimes you just have to be a follower in order to be a leader. Then, so you can follow those leaders, and then you can become a leader yourself because their leadership wants it kind of like made me want to become a leader in a sense. And honestly, like I'll say again, what's most important as well is what you do is you surround yourself with the right people as well. You surround yourself with the individuals that are in it. And, you know, the saying goes, the five people that you hang around with, you'll be the sixth person. Like, And so I see you hang around and talk to communicate, network with the people that the feel that you want to be in. And so you're learning from them. You're learning how to move like them. And mm -hmm. that's really important because if you want to do something like, I don't know, if you want to be a software engineer, you can't hang around with people that's doing, I don't know, like, arts and crafts or something like you know like you gotta hang out with software exactly. <laughs> you gotta hang out with software engineers to be in that mm -hmm. and so i see that that's what you do and you know mm -hmm. people can learn from that people can definitely learn from that yeah that's so true because when you're around people that have the same like goals and aspirations as you you can like kind of share like information like there i follow a lot of people that of course, are cybersecurity professionals, and they teach me things that I have never like heard about cybersecurity. And that's another thing you can never like learn too much or like know everything. So there's always like room to grow as long as you acknowledge that you always have room to grow and that you're like not perfect. Then I feel like you can definitely get somewhere in cybersecurity because you're not expected to like know everything. You're expected to like know the fundamentals and then just like keep on building yourself from there to become a professional, of course. Yeah, I most definitely agree. And being able to adapt to the environment as well, because mm -hmm. yeah, what you're saying is totally correct. Because the minute that you feel like you know everything, that's the that's the point that you lose. You have to be able to keep on growing and learning mm -hmm. because cybersecurity is a lot. It's always it's ever changing, especially with the new technology with ChatGPT and like you know the security implications of that. What can come with what that can come with that? You have to learn how to adapt to the environment and be able to learn with it. And I see you doing that as well because it's just not easy. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. Not everybody can want to learn not everybody want to learn not everybody want to grow everybody want to mm -hmm. some people are just okay with what they know but with the ever-changing with technology how technology mm -hmm. is moving to this day with ai it's like mm -hmm. you have to learn how to adapt you have to learn to adapt yeah. or you can be left behind 
Yeah, that's so true. And like going back to what you were saying about the people that you surround yourself with, I really try to surround myself with people that not only they are like similar to me, but they also like give out good vibes, you know, because like if, if if I like know someone and they start like giving me bad vibes or bad energy, I'm just going to be like, <laughs> I, I can't really handle this in my life because I need like, I need those good vibes to like really lift up my vibration, you know, like to make me feel better and like to keep on going. And that's why I really try to like dish out the support on LinkedIn to other people as well, because I know sometimes people really need those positive vibes to like just keep going in their career journey. And that energy that you give, you know, it comes back and I, any bad energy, I agree with you. If, if it's bad energy and you you can feel it if someone have bad intentions, mm-hmm. you can feel it. You feel it, you got to go. <laughs> like, yeah. It ends, but about it. And that's good that you keep that around you. Don't mm-hmm. let any bad energy, anybody that's trying to bring you down or trying to, you know, not support you in the way that you need that support, the support that's going to help you propel. If they're not for that, <laughs> they got to go. Like, <laughs> really yeah, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> another thing is when when people like contact me on linkedin and they're like help me get a job it's like i can't really help you get a job like i <laughs> i can't really do that but i can like give you resources that you can use to like keep learning and keep growing but no but not many people really ask for that i appreciate the people that really do ask for like advice or like some kind of support or resources not just right away DMing me like get me a job yeah. I mean, that's, <laughs> I just really... that's just looking to take like they're not trying to give value they're not trying mm-hmm. to get that it's like I just need a job like I don't know you but just give me a job like that's why it's like <laughs> looking to take. like like try to like you gotta want it <laughs> like, yeah exactly you like you have to have that ambition to like keep on going and keep on learning like before my journey on LinkedIn I always had a LinkedIn but I wasn't using it in the way that you're supposed to use LinkedIn I was just like searching jobs and I was like applying for every single like cybersecurity job out there but like at that time I didn't really know like what kind of careers you can have in cybersecurity like there's like under the subsection like under the section of computer science there's an even bigger subsection under like cybersecurity, there's like defense, there's there's offense, and under those titles, there's even more <laughs> subsections. <laughs> so it's like I didn't even know there was like so many, but I people really need to like hone in on one of those and like learn all this all the like different skills that pertain to that job role. And so far, what do you see yourself most interested in? Like, what where do you see yourself going in mm-hmm. cyber security? So I see myself as more of like a defensive player, like broadly defense. But I'm also like currently doing like identity and access management, security operations center, and social engineering prevention. And all of those, I, I see them as defensive because identity and access management, it's like, what kind of people have what kind of access to different resources obviously if someone like like authenticates into a system for example they can't have like like if they're a user they can't have admin access that's you don't know what they could do you don't know what they could change and then also it comes down to like least uh like privilege which just means that like the most privileged person, like for example, the admin, like what kind of access do they have? Like, like do, can they like go in and change everything? Like that person also needs to be controlled as well. And then security operations center, obviously it's like monitoring logs. Uh, We're currently using, so at Senovate, the place that I worked at, we're currently using this like super cool platform. It's called Stellar Cyber. And I had never heard of it before, but it's such a cool tool because it like ingests logs from like different like providers. Like for example, like it can use Okta for identity and uh, 
Microsoft for like Active Directory and everything. It like just like takes all of those logs in from those different places and collects them into one place. And it starts doing like correlation. Like if, for example, there's like failed login attempts in in like multiple different places from the same IP address, it's going to figure out, oh, all of these are like connected. So then it starts like creating an incident. And honestly, like, I did not know that there was even a platform that could do that. And I was like, wow. And it's really fun to learn and use. And I'm currently like building sensors and figuring out alerts on that. And for social engineering prevention, um, we provide services that are like uh, security awareness training because a lot of companies don't actually know. But like if, for example, a employee gets like an email that's that says it's from like for example the ceo and it's like super urgent and they like need something one click of uh, any link on that like email can like destroy your entire organization all it takes is one click (laughs) exactly and it's like wow it's really good to be informed yeah it's like super dangerous like that that's why i really want to like have an impact on like the defensive side of cybersecurity because people like don't know how bad it can get until like it's it's actually happening you know so i want to protect people and i want to inform people as well and like so i do have a question for you especially when it comes to network defense so mm-hmm. i always bring this up but chat GPT, mm-hmm. <laughs> you can like you can specially craft phishing emails. So no one really don't have mm-hmm. to think. They can craft, you know, some social engineering tactics, sending it to the email and trying to get people to click those type of links. Where do you see how do you see that can be prevented? Where what's your vision? What's your goal to seeing mm-hmm. how that can be mitigated? Yeah, uh, first of all, for that, it's kind of like a difficult situation. I think that has to be prevented like internally, like internal to the company, which is where the security awareness training comes in, because you need to be able to like, identify where a specific email is coming from, like you have to check the email address that's sending the email, you have to check the subject, you need to check a bunch of different things, you need to even like, just hover over the link what does the link like look like don't actually click it you know because if you click it then it's over but if you hover over it sometimes it will like show up where it's gonna take you or redirect you so those like little things can like really help with awareness and sometimes all you have to do like if you're part of a company and you you've received an email and you're like this doesn't look like a usual email that i would get from someone that I know in this company, you can just send it to the IT department and they can like start figuring out where this email came from. Yeah, so I think that's a good way to prevent it. Of course, there there is no such thing as like 100% secure. So there's always gonna be that risk, but hey, that's what, that's what security service providers are for, that we wanna like minimize that risk. Yeah, and yeah, the potential is always, yeah, there's always a possibility. You always you can't, you know, somebody just wake mm-hmm. up in the morning, then they have their cup of coffee, they check the email. Oh, uh, you know, mm-hmm. Joe, uh, you know, Joe, the CEO, emailed me, not thinking, oh, mm-hmm. let me click that link, and just like that, it can happen. But yeah, what's most important is trying to minimize, mitigate this type of mm-hmm. risk, train your employees to know what to look out for, what not to do, and the things that mm-hmm. mitigate the most risk as possible. Um, Absolutely. Like risk management, I feel like not too many companies actually care about risk management, which is something that's like super important because you obviously want to minimize that risk for your company. You don't want to like, especially if you're handling like very sensitive data then you have to like have that system that that security operations center that identity access management that that training for your employees to minimize that risk you know yeah and Mm -hmm. it just is 
with you no know, with the, the technology that's coming out more and more you have a lot more attacks even like you have to worry about things such as your mobile devices it's not just being on your computer on the network yeah worry about your mobile devices there's so many different mm -hmm. openings that you know you have attackers trying to get in it just having those having those barriers having those things that's going to help set up so less data nothing is really going to be compromised you want the less mm -hmm possibilities ever and isn't like again like you said it's never 100 percent secure nothing's ever 100 mm -hmm. secure because you can yeah. have one leading factor that can mm -hmm. definitely um <laughs> compromise yeah. everything um, yeah every company wants to say that they're 100 percent secure but then they don't realize how insecure they might be until something like an emergency happens and it's like now what are we supposed to do? We don't have an incidence response plan. We don't have that like way to like respond to that or like detect any of those like in, like problems. It's just and, not good. And you're not even like it's not always even about the outside threat. You have to worry about the insider threat as well. Like, yeah, that's, that's one big thing as well that you know. I mean, a lot of companies see, but in a realistic term, I think the biggest threat most likely is the insider threat because you don't know. It, again, it could be like accidental, something accidental, mm -hmm. somebody plugging a USB into a port that they wasn't supposed to like, you know, plug in or mm -hmm. they just, they can have malicious intent and do something. So that's another part that you got aspect that you got to think about as well with network defense. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I do want to ask you a question about your personal experience or what's something, what a pro, what's a project that you've been working on that you're particularly proud of? So a project that I was really proud of was when I joined the Digital Innovation Lab at San Diego State. And I joined it about six months ago. And I have been working on a project I'm not completely done with it yet, but I'm really proud with what I have so far in the project. And it's basically a geolocation of IP addresses and using those like different IP address services to like detect where the IP address is coming from. And I, I'm currently using a map box and IP info for that. And I'm coding it in Python which is my favorite language. Honestly, I would, I would stick with Python forever. But of course, as a computer science major at SDSU, I'm going to have to learn all the other languages as well, like Java, C++, but it's still my favorite. <laughs> so yeah, I'm really proud of that project. And it's it really gave me some good exposure to the field of cybersecurity as well, because it's IoT cybersecurity. Yeah. IoT, that's another technology that's going to be really prominent. Um, I was speaking on this the other day, and, like, everything is going to be eventually IoT, per se. Mm -hmm. Like, you have to worry about, I mean, not worry about, but, you know, you know, your home is pretty much IoT. You can control the temperature. You can control your lights. You can control everything. But I imagine you can control your stove. I'm pretty sure, I'm not, I'm pretty sure they have that already. Like, you can control your mm -hmm. oven and stuff like that. And so... You have to worry about those type of being able to have the hands on activities of being able to create things like that. You're going to put yourself in a better position because you're actually learning, it. especially in college right now. This is the best place to learn it because now you you have the capabilities to create, develop, make something your own and like learn more about it. So when, once you go into the career field, um, you have the hands on experience, you know how and you're practicing with it. Yeah, that's so true. Completely agree with that. Implementation is everything. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's ask this question. Can you talk about some of the emerging trends of technology in the field of cybersecurity that you like you find pretty exciting per se? Some some trends in cybersecurity, I feel that there's a lot of different technologies in cybersecurity, but I think right now we're kind of like moving away from all of those like legacy like solutions, which a legacy solution just means that they are trying to modernize themselves, but they can't really do that because they're so like 
outdated and they can't really adapt to the new technologies and the new risks and the new threats in the cybersecurity landscape. For example, this is an example that I like to use, but I'm not trying to attack anyone or anybody's company right now. Like, for example, Splunk. When I use Splunk, like there, there isn't really anything there. Like it's, you just have to, it requires a lot of like people to like just going through all of those like logs and everything like that. And it's really hard to like pinpoint that problem. So moving to like things like OpenXDR, like extended uh, detection and response and like built from the ground up, then those are like the more more helpful technologies because they can do all the correlation and they can like minimize the data ingestion and save the company like millions and billions of dollars that they would be spending on those other like solutions. And for example, those legacy solutions as well, Sometimes you, for example, like, let's say you're using Splunk again, <laughs> you're using that, but then you also have to like start introducing a bunch of other like, other like things to like help it, which obviously just brings up the cost of using those technologies. So at some point, that's just going to be too much, especially for those small to mid-sized businesses. So moving to extended detection and response is just going to be a lot more cost effective and just a lot more resourceful yeah yeah less um less less when you have, we don't have to have so many people just scrolling like through the logs like looking at yeah, yeah that could be first off you gotta worry about the cost of having those people doing it and the time yeah, the time People, it just is nowadays, it's not just, there's no point when you have other resources right now. That's going to mm-hmm. make make it easier. Like, the easier that you can make things for people, especially in a career path, and like, easier but effective as well. You want it to be mm-hmm. easier but effective as well. And That's so true. When you can find those type of resources and those applications, it, it would just make your company better. This like, <laughs> maybe- yeah. Yeah. Completely agree with that. That's that's what we try to do at Cinovate. We try to make the company better. We try to minimize risk in a very cost efficient way. Like we really care about other companies not paying so much, especially small companies. They don't have that much like money to be spending like millions and billions of dollars on these like security providers. So that's that's something that we really care about and making a difference in the world. And that's good to hear, to be honest, because I feel like that's that's what a lot of companies should do. A lot of companies should be able to be able to be able to be a great provider and be able to help others in a in a in a mass way. And this mm-hmm. kind of leads me into another question. And yes. it is where do you see like the importance of diversity into the cybersecurity realm and computer mm-hmm. science and why do you really think it's important for having the diversity and different experience and perspective in this field? Mm-hmm. So diversity, I just always thought of it as something super important, but then I realized that not a lot of people think that it's something important. You need that diversity, first of all, for different ideas and different perspectives, but not only that, to represent people from those perspectives if that makes sense like you need to have those people as part of your company to also provide that unique perspective into people that are similar to them if that makes sense like I just always thought that was something important and that it was something that people cared about but I was like kind of naive to think that but I will always like try to like fight for that and try to fight for that difference of perspective in the entire community not just not just it or tech it's also in like science engineering math all of those different like places that there's not so much representation of like for example like women people of color lgbtq like that's just not fair in my opinion and yeah i think it's important 
to include diversity and to like, even overall, right? Because, you know, you may have somebody that sees things differently than what you will see. You, they might have a different upbringing and even a different upbringing can lead to a different result. And when you see, when you have two people with two different visions, they, they see things differently, it can lead to a solution. And I agree with you. It's, it's really important, not just in the cybersecurity realm, not in IT field, but overall, you want to have a diversity, different perspective, because again, different perspectives with two different people, they can see things and you can collaborate those ideas to create something. You can use those ideas to create a solution. And I mean, you see with a lot of technology nowadays, it's, be, it's not just one person, not one demographic creating something. You have a lot of different ideas, a lot of different backgrounds, a lot of different experiences creating these new things that we see today. And I agree with you, it's really important to have this diversity. Yeah, people are really afraid of a diversity of thought because they think it's going to lead to more conflict. But conflict is necessary because you because without the conflict and without the different perspectives, then there will never be a solution to that conflict in a way. Because you need to have those two different perspectives to be able to come to an agreement on something. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah, most definitely. Like, you, you need people to butt heads to like come come to terms with something. Because again, if it's if there's no conflict, there's no resistance, and resistance is good mm -hmm. in my opinion. You need some kind of resistance because resistance it creates it creates one of the best. You know, resistance create one of the best products we ever see because nothing ever is going to come easy. It's not going to come easy when there's a new idea, new technology coming. It's not going to be easy. Not everybody might come to acceptance to it. But when you have those resistance, even resistance of opinions, resistance of um, ideas, collaborating those will come to something. And it's, it's really important to see not just in IT, not in computer science, not in cybersecurity, but in the grant as a whole. And That's so true. So now I'm going to ask you this question. Um, how do you see cyber security evolving in the next five years? What do you see really changing to cyber security? So I think that in the next couple of years, people are going to start deviating away from, like I said, those legacy solutions because they're going to realize that it's too, like the cost to implement all of those together are just not worth it. They're going to look for they're going to look for something that is just one thing that's built from the ground up, like I said, like XDR solutions, extended detection and response. So that, those solutions are not just cost effective. They just help your, your organization. Yeah, Especially that's... because it requires, it requires also like less less work like for example the stellar cyber that we're using for our company it's it requires a lot less work because the artificial intelligence and machine machine learning that's in the back end of the platform is doing all of that correlation and work for you you are just going to need those like analysts to like go in and like look at what is going on with the alerts and things like that but other than that there's going to be like like deviation away from those especially because like for example like if you're using splunk it's going to be difficult to have that like 24 7 monitoring for example it's just about being able for companies to be more innovative be able to mm -hmm. make things smoother for their clients because no one wants to go you know again those legacy it just it's not going to be reliable in the next five, 10 years when you're, mm -hmm. when you have to have these manual people. And that's why for me, I love AI. I, I'm a, I love cybersecurity, but I love AI with cybersecurity because I feel like mm -hmm. when we match AI, humans and cybersecurity, I feel as if you will be able to make one of the most best defensive network ever seen, like any, any defense network defense or whatever it is. I feel like with if we are able to use AI with humans, 
cybersecurity will be a real, it's going to be an interesting field overall because first off, you're going to have the people using it for the on the offensive side. You're going to have people using it for the defensive side as thing as well. But when we're able to like use it to use use it to the best capability, I feel like it would just be a different field. I I see cybersecurity be different, like really different. Like even with what we have with chat GPT or even like the API model that's based off of GPT three. And when GPT four come out, it just like and when you're able to even craft your own, like that's 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 the crazy part about it is you don't have to use chat GPT. You can make your own. You can make your own GPT, chat GPT. And you yeah. can use these parameters to make it for what you want to use it for. Mm-hmm. And so if my idea was like, what if you use it for, you know, log analysis? What if you you set it for these parameters to be like, hey, look for these, look for this, look for this type of event. And mm-hmm. I feel like AI will make it better. It will recognize things quicker and better than what a human can do it for. You you use the human to oversee it, know what to use mm-hmm. and use and but use AI to like do the analysis, do the output, everything with it. It's gonna be it's gonna be really interesting in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Again, it's my opinion. I'm not saying it's right, but I feel like it's gonna be really, really interesting mm-hmm. in the next five years with what we have mm-hmm. with AI and all these different applications and software and everything that's coming out. And, it's going to happen pretty quickly. It's going to happen pretty quickly. I think it's going to be quicker than what a lot of people yeah. expect. Yeah, that's so true. I mean, like, it's already happening, like, with Stellar Cyber. Like, I didn't even know that was a thing, but they're already, like, making that, like, artificial intelligence and machine learning in the back end to, like, figure out these different, like, attacks, like, brute force attacks, uh, privilege escalation attacks. All of those different attacks, it it will pick up on them just because of the the machine learning and it it like has experience with that so like it learns all of those like different tactics and starts like finding those and like creating alerts based off of them like if if that's where we're at currently then i just see this like technology especially stellar cyber just continue growing because i'm not completely sure if there's any other company other than stellar cyber like currently working on something like this there might be later on but but i still feel like stellar cyber already has like its grasp in that like aspect of cybersecurity and ai combined so i think that's really cool and it's really useful and the, for from your experience with it do you think have it been pretty accurate with any like alerts or anything that like the output have it been pretty accurate in your experience when you yeah things? yeah it has been pretty accurate like um it also does its best to eliminate like false positives and everything like that so I think that it's just going to continue getting better especially because the company has been around for a while so this all of that machine learning it's just going to continue learning and keep getting more accurate it's not really gonna go back it's just gonna keep learning and keep adjusting itself based on all of those alerts yeah Yeah. it's gonna be interesting because i mean it's only 2023 and imagine um, like when they start implementing like even previous um previous like attacks uh, like or anything to like uh, analyze and like the future like (laughs) just think about two years down the line it's gonna be better it's gonna be way better than what it is right now and it's gonna just expedite like it's gonna get way better than what you see right now it's pretty interesting it's pretty interesting like see where everything's about to be going towards and it's exciting it's really exciting and what's most important is staying up to date with the latest trends latest technologies and i asked you what what do you use what platform do you use to keep you updated with the latest technologies and latest trends? Mm-hmm. So I think this is kind of obvious uh, for me, but for me, I use LinkedIn. <laughs> I use LinkedIn, like I use other like cybersecurity professionals to like learn about the latest in cybersecurity and the latest technologies. And there are so many people out there that just are like willing to, to like help 
you learn and like they just post all the technologies that they use so then you can like if you're curious enough you can go and like explore that technology yourself and i also use linkedin to like stay updated on like different things that happen like for example the the i believe it was last pass they had like a data breach a while ago and it's like wow that's not very good that that's not i thought we were kind of better than that but at the same time that's just another thing that shows not 100% secure but we still should try to eliminate that risk yeah and just again like setting the barriers setting the defense that's quantum cool again it's not always percent secure but what you can do is just definitely trying to prevent it the most preventative measure because you know things happen sometimes it could be an accident someone you know log into a website that they weren't supposed to log into and next thing you know you're you're getting give you access to an attack or whatever it is but just trying to mitigate those mitigate those type of risks mm-hmm. and so I'm going to lead to the final question, and this question leads to what advice would you give to somebody starting into cybersecurity or trying to change careers into cybersecurity, and what would you tell them what to do and how to move in this field? So I I have a lot of advice for those people. Uh, Like, I started in cybersecurity. I started with, like, knowing nothing, basically, and then when I was, like, searching for jobs, it was like all of the jobs were saying like, oh, you need to have like three years need experience to though. like have those transferable skills. Like, for example, like if someone's coming from a uh, management background, they can put that they were in management like or that they know teamwork or that they know leadership because managers are basically leaders. Right. So all of these like different transferable skills, I suggest people like do research on it and like try to figure out a way to put it into their resume. Because the second that I put transferable skills on my resume, for example, I put like IT leadership because I I lead projects in the digital innovation lab. I I'm good with teamwork. I did a lot of teamwork when I was working in as a math instructor in Mathnasium, um, because I had a lot of coworkers and we were all like helping each other like when we were teaching these kids i put um stress management stress management is definitely an important one because even if there's like a lot of pressure on you you still need to like know how to keep going and i feel like that's something that employers would look for those are just some examples that i have like right off the top of my head but i i don't really remember all of them but i i know that i put a bunch on there (laughs) Because I I just knew myself, like, for me, like, a resume felt, like, irrelevant because I knew that no matter what cybersecurity, like, defensive position I would be in, I would always try to continue learning. I would always be ambitious, and I would always try to, like, lift others up and support others. So I already knew that I was going to be a successful person if those companies would just take a chance on me. So I'm so thankful for uh, Senovate for taking that chance on me and realizing how passionate I am about cybersecurity. And another piece of advice that I have is network your butt off because those people are, first of all, going to support you through anything. And they're going to give you all the good vibes that you need. And good vibes are like super important, of course. But they will also give you the resources and a lot of people are willing to help if you ask them in a kind way, not in a I want a job way, <laughs> you know. And, yeah, that's a little bit of advice that I have. Uh, and those, those are, are, like, the most important ones, in my opinion. And those are gems. Um, those are definitely gems. And, like, having the transferable skills on your resume, again, that's something that some people just miss out on. It's like, you know, being able to have stress management, like, you know, you have a project due or something's happening, you're getting overloaded, but being able to still produce results, that's what's most important. Still be able to produce results. Mm-hmm. And you get those are a lot of gems that a lot of people can really pick up of and you know use implement in their own lives and their own career path. And I thank you for that. Mm-hmm. I thank you for that. Of course. I just want to see other people like get there because sometimes all it takes is like 
getting your foot in the door. And then after that, you can just keep getting that experience. Then it's going to be easier to like find another job. For example, you just have to get your foot in the door into the industry. And then after that, it, it, it will just start becoming easier for you. Like, that's what I want for people. I want people to like, to like get there, especially the people that are like, like really trying to, but then still employers are like not taking chances on them, but I know they're passionate and I see like every day they're like doing all the work and putting in all that necessary work. So it's like, I really want them to get there. Yeah. And as soon as, again, yeah, as soon as a employer take a chance on somebody, I mean, yeah, once you're in, you're in. And like, yeah, employees do got to take that chance because there's mm-hmm. you got a lot of people that really want to learn and um, that want to be better, trying to like provide the value, share knowledge and like be able to give their best them to to, to that employer, to that company. And mm-hmm. employers really do got to take chances on these people, on these young, a lot of young kids just coming out of college that really want to learn, but they don't have the experience. Take mm-hmm. the chance on them. Take the chance. And a lot of times you would not be disappointed. You're an example of that. You're an example of that. So yeah. I, yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> I applaud you for that. And I just want to say keep them being inspiration for these people. Be be an inspiration for others. Keep continue what you do. And mm-hmm. a lot of people following your journey. And you're going to do really good in your career path and excited to see where everything leads you. Thank you so much. And likewise, because you you created this podcast and you also started like doing some writing those articles for those people that also need that inspiration, too. So I also am happy that I inspired you to do that. Like that's that's something that I love to see. And I know that you're going to like continue to be a very impactful person in the cybersecurity community. And I love to see it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I just want to say thank you for coming for the first episode of the Cyber Gym Rap podcast. Um, yeah, a big thank you for coming today and sharing your insight, your perspective on the field of cybersecurity, life, how to move. And yeah, really appreciate you for coming today. And yeah, we're excited to follow your journey and see where everything leads you. Thank you so much. I was happy to be here. Thank you very much. And um, all right, guys, um, this is a wrap for the very first episode. And thank you for listening.